Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, inert projectiles. We've covered this topic in the past at some point, maybe part of another video, but uh, here we're breaking it out separately. In a recent video we filmed on 16-inch uh, projectiles of some sort, I can't even remember what we were talking about, we talked about how the, uh, the blue shell in there was an inert projectile. And a lot of people commented, well, it can't be inert because even if it doesn't explode, it's still moving fast enough it's going to do damage. And um, while that assessment is correct, the term inert, when it's referring to shells, just means that it doesn't explode. It doesn't mean that they can't fire, they can't damage things. Um, you just don't fire training rounds at things that you're worried about hitting with the training round. So, you've got regular projectiles, they tend to be painted whatever color they are for their explosive charge and whatnot, and then you've got projectiles like these. These are two types of inert projectiles as designed. So, the blue one, like we said earlier, is called a BLMP round, blind loaded and plugged. So it is a real projectile body. But when you unscrew everything, get to the inside, it does not have a burster charge in it that will make it explode. Instead, it has been filled with sand to make it the correct weight. The key is, it has a brass base ring here, which can engage the rifling and means that this is able to be fired from the gun. So this is a training round. If you're, say, firing at a towed sled, like another ship is towing a target, you would fire one of these. It doesn't explode, it's not going to cause shrapnel that could go and hit that tow ship or break the tow cable. It's just going to put a hole in that canvas square sled that's being towed and show that, yeah, that you hit the target. It's also saving you at least one step during the manufacturing process, putting explosives in this, so it's a little bit cheaper to expend in training. For the 16-inch guns, the Navy planned on about 100 shells per year, per battleship, to be expended in training. I'm not sure about the 5-inch guns. The second type is an all-brass shell. Notice that it does not have a base ring. This will prevent it from engaging the rifling in the barrel, which means essentially, if you tried to fire this, it's like firing a smooth bore. This isn't going to grip the rifling and spin, and it's not going to grip the rifling and prevent the gases from escaping around the back of it. So if you try to fire this, a lot of the gases will go up the side and it just gets lobbed. It won't go as far, it won't be as accurate. You're not supposed to fire it. These brass shells are made actual weight just so that you can pass them around essentially like hot potatoes when you're training to use these guns. The 5-inch 38 is a manually loaded gun. There's up to 14 men in the gun house on an Iowa-class battleship loading those 5-inch guns. So these are used often in combination with a practice loading machine, which we would have had between the aft funnel of the ship before the after fire control tower, so that the crew can drill and train on how to use these. On New Jersey's, this would have been a twin-mount 5-inch loading machine, but the same basic principle. On board New Jersey, the shells are passed to the gun through dredger hoists from the magazine. On a destroyer escort, they're passed by hand through hatches. The hoist on New Jersey sets the fuse of the shell. On Slater, once the shell comes to the gun, you've got to set the fuse we have seen uh, five inch practice loading machines on USS Massachusetts when we visited her. We've seen other practice loading machines on uh, Slater that we've definitely filmed and probably a couple other ships that we visited as well. So some of them do still exist. None of the Iowa's retained theirs in the 80s. Another type of inert projectile would be the shells that we have on display on the ship. Obviously, the Navy is not giving us live shells. However, they didn't have a ton of practice shells lying around. So when they gave the museum shells, many of them 
were regular Mark 13 high capacity rounds that they had taken the burster charge out of and replaced it with concrete so that it remains the same weight. Those being real shells stamped on their base ring that they are Mark 13 HC projectiles uh, would scare somebody who knew what they were looking at and be like, oh my God, you've got explosives in your parking lot. This thing weighs a ton. Um, except that the Navy put inert markings on those shells as well. For the 16 inch guns, we know that they carried nine of these brass shells per turret. So three per gun barrel, 27 total on board. And I'm assuming, because there isn't a practice loading machine for the 16 inch guns, I'm assuming they were to practice moving those things around the shell decks and, and maybe even the hoists themselves as well. Uh, so you can practice moving these big things around without the danger of anything explosive. I'm not sure how many BLMP rounds would have normally be, been carried. For the five inch guns, I'm also not sure of the exact number. We as a museum believe that these racks outside of the magazines are for the uh, brass shells because there are locked and climate controlled magazine spaces. However, um, we could be completely wrong on that guess and this could be for ready service ammunition, although it's further away from the hoist. Um, it could be for BLMP rounds so that they're not stacked up in the racks over there and hard to get to. Um, we're not entirely sure. We don't have a, a great picture of this P-Way yeah, sh showing what this would have been loaded with in service. We're down on third deck just outside of one of the five inch magazines. And man, I can tell you it would stink to have to carry these projectiles up five, six stories to where the practice loading machine was. You might say, oh, throw them in a dredger hoist. All right, cool. The, the dredger hoist gets you a couple of stories, but it does, there isn't one that goes to the practice loading machine. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure. All I know is that these racks are perfectly sized for the shells and the powder canisters. What do you think? Does it make sense having brass shells like this around that you can't fire out of the guns when you've got completely inert rounds like these on board as well? It seems like it's strange to have both. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.